Hey everybody, it's Dan the Chess Enthusiast, and I'm here with my video on the shallop defense, which is a defense that black can employ in the King's Gambit accepted lines. Now, before we get started, a couple of stats about the shallop defense. Uh, it scores, I got these stats from ecochess.com, and it scores a 42% win for white, a 34% win for black, and a 24% draw. So it's a pretty solid defense, and in fact, historically, uh, the shallop defense had been considered almost a complete bust to the King's Gambit um, until the last couple of decades when more attacking lines have been discovered and the theory has really kind of uh, been worked out to where uh, the shallop, while still a respected defense, is no longer the powerhouse defense that it was once considered to be. So with that little introduction, let's get started here. So we have getting into the King's Gambit accepted, obviously, pawn e4, pawn e5, pawn f4, black accepts. White develops the knight to f3, and here the shallop defense is simply a knight to f6. Now in response to this, white is going to push the pawn to e5, and black is going to jump the knight actually to the rim of the board and put it on h5 for now. Now from here, there are a couple of different variations from this position. First, I'm going to take us through uh, the end of the main line, and then I'm going to come back and talk about uh, three main variations that you might see. So continuing with the main line here, uh, in this position, white is simply going to develop its bishop to uh, e2, and black is going to play pawn to g5, kind of getting into the classical setup of the king's gambit accepted, uh, just adding another defender on the pawn on f4. Since black is up uh, a pawn in this position, uh, it does want to hold on to that material advantage as long as it can. White's going to castle and black is going to slide the rook over to uh, the g-file, which is putting it opposite white's castled king, and also just putting uh, another defender on the pawn on g5. From here, white is going to uh, put another pawn in the center of the board on d4, and white, I'm sorry, black is going to respond by simply pushing the pawn forward to uh, d5, establishing its own pawn in the center. And this actually right here is the end of the main line that I could find for the shallop. Uh, it's only seven moves. Usually the opening is uh, at least 10 to 12 moves, but for the shallop, this was all I could find. So to talk briefly about the position, black, although it has a knight on the rim on h5, after moves like g4 and maybe even queen out to g5 or h4, is going to be able to put a lot of pressure on white's position. On the other side of the board, white has a clear lead in development and could dampen any attack from black with a move like queen to d3 putting pressure on h7. If white's queen gets to h7, it would obviously be a major thorn in the black position, one which black would have to remove before proceeding with an attack. Um, that's the shallop defense, and I did want to go back, however, to uh, this position right here and talk about a couple of variations that you might see. The first variation that we're going to talk about is uh, called the Tashkent attack, or the Tashkent variation. Now, the Tashkent variation is not something that uh, you see at high levels of chess very often because it actually results in a fairly uh, good position from black if played correctly, and it's really not difficult for black to play the Tashkent variation uh, correctly. But the Tashkent variation is simply uh, pushing the pawn to g4 and attacking that knight. Now, currently, the knight has no squares to go to. Um, however, there is the move en passant, and black is actually going to capture the pawn en passant with a pawn to g3. From here, uh, white is going to push uh, its d pawn into the center onto d4, and black is going to respond by establishing a pawn on d5. Now the knight is going to play to g5. Uh, the knight is protected by the bishop on c1, and it's also starting to put a little bit of pressure on the square on f7, as well as opening up white's queen for an attack on the knight, uh, which is sitting on h5. Uh, however, black can very easily defend by simply pushing the pawn to uh, g6, and that knight is not defended. White can play its queen to f3, uh, putting even more pressure on the f7 square, uh, but again, one simple move to defend, pawn to f6, and now actually uh, black is a side that's starting to get a little bit of the initiative. Um, it might be able to swap off a couple of uh, white's center pawns. It's also attacking the knight currently on g5, and uh, Black's knight on h5 isn't going anywhere, it's pretty strong in the position, as well as the fact that uh, white's kingside position is fairly busted. So this is the Tashkan variation. Like I said, it, it looks kind of uh, scary and menacing at first, but actually it's really not that bad. Um, and again, if black plays correctly, and as you saw, it's not difficult to do so, 
uh, black's going to have absolutely no trouble uh, in this position at all. So that's the Tashkent variation. And uh, one more variation that we're going to look at here. If in this position, instead of immediately developing the bishop to uh, e2, which as I showed you before was the main line, uh, sometimes what you might see from white is an immediate uh, pawn to d4 establishing that uh, strong pawn center. Now, from here, uh, black really has two responses, pawn to d6 and pawn to d5. We're going to take a quick look at both of them. Uh, pawn to d6 is actually going to result in what looks like a really, really wild line, but after the dust settles, you're going to see that this is actually a really strong position for white. Um, in this position, what white can do here is develop the queen to e2, and black is going to push the pawn to uh, d5. The reason black does this is because with the queen sitting there on e2, uh, if the pawn were to capture, if white's pawn were to capture on uh, e5, e captures d, then there would be a discovered attack. So to avoid all that, uh, black simply pushes the pawn to d5. From here, white pushes the c pawn, and black is going to develop its bishop uh, onto e6, putting a defend another defender on uh, its center pawn on d5. Black, I'm sorry, white is simply going to capture that pawn, and black's going to recapture. From here, the knight develops to c3, attacking the bishop, and instead of wasting any tempos trying to save the bishop, black's just going to develop uh, its own knight onto c6. Before capturing the bishop, however, white is going to develop one more piece and put its bishop on d2. Uh, black can respond by uh, playing its bishop immediately down to b4. Uh, from here now, though, uh, white can capture the bishop on d5, and after the queen recaptures, uh, white can simply castle. Now, you might be thinking, like, you know, this leaves the pawn on a2 hanging, and it does, and actually the line continues with the queen coming down to capture the pawn. But if you actually look at this position, this really isn't that dangerous uh, for white quite yet, because... Um, the queen is really the only attacking piece in this position. Uh, the the dark square bishop is, certain, is currently being very uh, effectively countered by white's own dark square bishop, and the knight on c6 is currently just out of position and not able to contribute to any sort of attack. So from here, all that's going to happen is white is going to push the pawn to uh, d5, attack that knight. Before uh, moving the knight, however, Black is going to hit a check with uh, queen to a1, uh, white responds with king to c2, the queen can hit another check uh, on a4, and here the king can go to uh, b1, and there are, in this position, no more checks, and if you actually look at this, this is a really strong position for white, because um, as soon as black moves the knight on c6, if it, well, if it doesn't move the knight, obviously it's going to lose it, but um, once black does move that knight, then uh, the really strong center that white has built up is going to come crashing through the position. Uh, white's going to be able to trade off uh, a lot of pieces and still have a really strong uh, pawn center if white chooses. Um, also, there are just a lot of really dynamic uh, attacking possibilities in this position. So um, that is all from the variation. If you go back here... That's all from the variation uh, if after the knight goes to h5, white uh, plays pawn to d4, and then black responds with pawn to d6. The other response for black in this position is going to be an immediate pawn to d5. Now from here, the line is going to continue with a, a pawn push to c4. Uh, black is just going to develop its bishop to uh, e7. White develops its own bishop to e2. Uh, the black bishop can come down and uh, hit a check, and instead of capturing that bishop, which would uh, allow the black queen to come out to h4 and still hit a check, uh, white instead right now is just going to move the king over to f1, so white is no longer able to castle in the game. Um, now that the uh, bishop has done its job by hitting a check, the bishop simply retreats to e7. From here, you can have uh, the pawn capture on d5, the queen can recapture, the knight can come out to c3 attacking the queen, and the queen's going to retreat back to uh, d8. From here, the pawn gets pushed to d5, and in this position, white is definitely the preferred side. It's almost completely developed with two pawns in the center. The only drawback for white is that it can't castle, meaning it's going to have a hard time developing its rook on h1.
Black, on the other hand, has moved several pieces several times, and while it's ready to castle, besides being a pawn up in the position, Black has little to show for the opening. So here I've uh, brought up the final position in the main line for the shallop defense, and that is actually going to conclude this video. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it and have learned a little something about uh, the shallop defense. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them, and take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.